and I guess with that, David, do you want to uh, get started here? Uh, yes, I do here. Okay, I think everybody's muted. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get started then. Um, okay, hi, uh, I'm David Hayes, and this talk is on SatPy and SatPy based tools for easy meteorological satellite processing and visualization. Uh, this talk is mostly about SatPy, um, but then I basically took this opportunity to talk about every other project I work on. Um, they just happen to use SatPy. So it works out. I am a software developer at the University of Wisconsin-Madison at the Space Science and Engineering Center. Uh, for my work, I work on uh, tools like Polar to Grid, Geo to Grid, Geosphere, and a tool called SIFT. And through that work, I end up contributing or maintaining a lot of open source Python libraries like SatPy, PyResample, BizPy, and many others. Um, I try to stay kind of active in the uh, scientific Python ecosystem. So if you're around that space, you'll probably see my, my opinions weasel their way into discussions at some point. So the uh, general problem that SatPy is trying to solve is uh, trying to make it easier to work with satellite imagery data. Um, or satellite data in general. So in, uh, on this slide, you'll see 16 ABI channels um, from the ABI instrument. Each channel represents a different wavelength that's being observed, and each, each one of those um, can tell you something a little bit different about the atmosphere or, or the Earth that's being observed. And when we're talking about working with this data, maybe we're um, generating images like these on the slide, or maybe we're putting this data into some other analysis or a machine learning model. And uh, to do all of those things, there's a lot of complexity that goes into just handling the data. Uh, to start with, we have different file formats. Um, almost every different instrument has a different file format or a different scheme, or you have to know what the variables are named, uh, how calibration has to be done, whether it's converting radiances to brightness temperatures, reflectances, um, maybe there's uh, different ways of handling invalid or fill values. Um, maybe there's different types of corrections, or in the case of making images like this, maybe there's ways of uh, scaling or stretching the data to bring out certain features of it. Um, besides looking at uh, the regular band data, um, oh, I should also say bands can also be in different resolutions. So if you wanted to combine something with a 500 meter spatial resolution with something that has a one kilometer spatial resolution, you have to do some extra work to make those uh, something that you can combine and work with together. You might also be thinking about making nice pretty pictures like these true color RGBs. On the left is a Veers true color from the Veers instrument. On the right is that same ABI data set uh, true color. And um, these are made by combining multiple of those channels together, performing different corrections or enhancements on them uh, to get the colors that we see. In the Veers case, and in the case of any polar orbiter, we have to um, resample typically uh, to some gridded, uh, projected, um, uniformly spaced uh, grid. And uh, additionally, there's things that we might want to do to make the picture even prettier, like um, atmospheric uh, Rayleigh scattering correction or dealing with sun zenith, sun zenith angle things um, or sharpening techniques, all those different types of things that make the images look a little better. So there's a lot of complexity involved. Um, when it comes to SatPy, uh, what we at the uh, PyTroll community or in the PyTroll Pi community um, are trying to do is make this easier uh, via a Python library. The PyTro community is a global community of scientists and programmers um, all around the world trying to work on this library of the tools that um, we generally have to work with to get this type of work done. Uh, SatPy is made for programmers, but also people new to Python programming. Uh, the interfaces are meant to be simple so that um, you, sh you don't have to be an expert in Python to get the um, basics of what you want done. SatPy integrates with a lot of popular scientific Python libraries like X-Ray, DAS, Cartify, Rasterio, Rio X-Ray, and many others. So it either integrates uh, or uses them directly um, to make some special features available to you. So I do have two slides with Python code. Um, like I said, the interfaces are meant to be simple. So hopefully, if you're not familiar with Python syntax, this will still make sense. Uh, it's, it's meant to show how easy it is. 
So Setpyre revolves around this idea of a scene object that is a container for all of your data. We can tell the scene uh, what format our, our data is in by specifying a reader. So here, ABI level 1B, we tell it uh, what file names we have, and then we can ask the scene what data sets we could be loading from this scene object, from these files. And in this case, it's all 16 ABI channels. We can then use the scene.load method to load channel one. And behind the scenes, SatPy is going to open the files. It's going to calibrate the data. It's going to collect metadata. It's going to collect geolocation information uh, and make that all available to you with this bracket syntax in the scene to get an X-ray data, data array object. And if you're familiar with X-ray, this data array object is like any other X-ray data array object with just some extra metadata in it. If I wanted to load one of those true colors or any other RGB composite, uh, SatPy comes with um, a lot of built-in recipes for making these RGBs, or you can add your own. You can use that same scene.load method. I can ask for true color here, and behind the scenes, SatPy is going to do all those complicated things I talk about, like the Rayleigh correction, uh, figuring out what bands needed are, are needed to make this RGB, and um, um, and figuring out whether or not things are the same resolution and how they can be combined. Uh, I can also resample uh, the scene or the data that I've loaded with the resample method. I can resample the different projections or crop out certain regions of the data. Uh, here I'm using a native resampler, which is essentially just replicating or aggregating pixels together so that everything's the same resolution and can be combined easily. And uh, lastly, I have the save data sets method which by default will create GeoTIFFs. Uh, there are other formats that are available. Um, but the point here is, is that with three or four lines of code, uh, I did all that complex stuff I talked about without having to worry about all the details, and I got a pretty picture out. Uh, similarly, if I was going to do something with the data array and I wanted to put that into machine learning or anything else, um, all of that should be possible because I have access to that data. One other thing I wanted to mention about SatPy is that uh, it uses Dask. Dask is a uh, popular Python library for splitting up array operations across multiple cores on your system. The, uh, this animation is um, giving you an idea of how a Dask graph operates, where we split these operations into many little chunks, and um, we can process them over time, eventually finishing, finishing the entire computation. This uses less memory and is generally faster and this allows SatPy to do workflows that would normally require a very large server to be done on a laptop. SatPy supports a lot of different input formats. Uh, these are not all of them. Uh, one, some that I want to highlight are AHI, ABI, AGRI, AMI, uh, MODIS, VIRS, um, GLMs in there. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a link to the full list at the bottom. There's also output formats, including GeoTIFF, cloud-optimized GeoTIFF, a CF standard NetCDF file, a NetCDF format that's compatible with the National Weather Service AWIPS client. Uh, you can also do PNGs and JPEGs. And there's also other formats for visualization clients uh, or specific to visualization clients like Nino and the MyTIFF format. So, um, so that's SAPHI. Um, but at this point, you might be saying, I don't know Python, or maybe I don't want to learn Python. Uh, what are your options? So this is where these SatPy based tools come in. And these tools that I work on uh, follow very similar um, goals of making it easier for users uh, to be able to do these types of things. So we have projects, or I have projects like GeoDegrid and PolarDegrid, which provide a command line interface over the SatPy functionality. We have SIFT, which is a GUI application for basic data analysis. And we have a Geosphere website, which provides interactive image viewing um, and animation and stuff like that. So I'll dive into those a little bit more. So I talked about this is meant to make these types of workflows easier without coding. So uh, our goals are to provide simple interfaces, simple installation, allow for customization where we can, uh, but we also need these to perform well. We also want to build these tools on top of existing open source software, contribute when we can um, so that everybody benefits and that we're not duplicating work across all these projects. For Polar Degrid and GeoDegrid, I mentioned their command line interfaces. Their, their main functionality comes down to single uh, bash scripts where I can provide a reader, a writer, 
and a list of files or, or a directory of files, and it will just start crunching those, um, crunching that data. And I can get by default 16 ABI channel geotiffs, a true color, and a natural color RGB geotiff. Um, and all of that performs very fast. Polar to grid is very similar reader, writer, series of files, and I get a ton of geotiffs out. And there are a lot of customizations. There's uh, utility scripts for um, adding coastlines and borders and things like that, or, um, or adding color maps and other types of enhancements that you can do. Installation, I mentioned we want that to be simple. For Linux, for Polar to Grid and Geo to Grid, this comes down to a tarball that you can untar, and then you get direct access to those bash scripts. Uh, for the SIFT tool, so SIFT stands for Satellite Information Familiarization Tool. It's, uh, like I mentioned, it's a GUI application for data analysis. You have a map in the center of the UI for panning and zooming. You can uh, probe the data, get a selected region of data, and make a scatter or histogram plot from those. You can customize color maps. Um, there's, uh, you can choose different projections of how you're viewing the data, and all that reprojecting is done on the GPU on the fly, so it's very fast. Uh, this is powered by the VizPy library that I mentioned before that I'm a maintainer of, and that's providing an open GL canvas for all this map stuff. Uh, and then all the reading of the data is provided by SatPy. Also in the last uh, year or two, we've been collaborating with UMetSat and they've been adding a lot of features. And so we're hoping to uh, make a release soon with some of the features that they've been working on. The Geosphere website, uh, it's meant to display products produced by the GeoDegrid project, uh, including the 16 uh, ABI channels for Go 16, as well as an RGB combination of true color and night microphysics. It has a pan and zoom map animating over time steps. The data or the, the images are in full resolution, so they're not uh, degraded for being, even though they're in a browser. So you're getting, for example, in the true color composite, 500 meter spatial resolution. It's also low latency. We have on our processing cluster uh, a GOES rebroadcast direct stream into our CSPP software that also includes GeoDegrid, which can create all of these images in around four minutes. And then seconds later, they're available to you in your browser. Um, all of this processing is running on a Kubernetes cluster, which is, uh, I'm just mentioning that to say that SatPy and GeoDegrid and these products don't have any real reason that they can't operate in a uh, cloud-like environment. We're making updates to the website. We hope to release that soon with Go17 products, as well as the ability to, um, on top of the PNG screenshots you can already do, uh, you can you will be able to make MP4 video um, videos of your animation that you're viewing. And uh, there'll also be other performance and user experience improvements. So uh, that's all I have about SatPy and the tools that I work on that use SatPy. Here's all my contact information. There's links to the code, to the project repositories. Uh, there's also a link to uh, the PyTro community website, which includes instructions for joining our Slack or our mailing list if you want to talk more about SatPy. Thank you. Great. Thanks, David. Do we have any questions? Either feel free to raise your hand or put them in the chat. So David, I guess um, I'll ask a question. Uh, in SatPy, you know, for the ARM program, a lot of the instruments we deploy is, you know, at a single location or is, is vertically pointing, viewing the column essentially. Um, in SatPy, is there a way to pull out just like individual pixels or, or data um, over a lat long? Um, yes, we, it's not something that we have a lot of experience with in the SatPy world because we do generally make these larger images or larger um, data scenes, uh, but I also work with rooftop instruments, so I, I think I get the the idea that you're, you're going for. Um, although it's not always performant with Dask to uh, try to reach out and get specific pixels, there are utilities for doing all of that. Um, you, you can end up getting a NumPy array and doing essentially everything else that you'd want to do with an array of data. Okay. Okay. 